oh, we're going to do a trainer profile and we're going to do it on Mick Appleby. And we're going to use the Profarm software to do it and a trainer profile Excel sheet that we have that's completely blank at the moment. There's nothing in it, as you can see. And we're going to fill some of the bits in using the software to do it. Okay, so I've got the Profarm software open. Now, what, the first thing is when you're profiling a trainer or a jockey, you might not know what we've called him in Proform. So the easiest way to find out is to use one of the searches. So in this case, trainer search. So that was from the features at the top. You should better see my cursor because I've got it highlighted in like yellow. So if we go to trainer search and then we just choose contain and we know is surname is Applebit. So if we just go at this stage, we've got two trainers with the surname Applebit and we can see in Profarm we've named him Michael Applebit. Now it's worth doing this because if you choose someone like say Mullins, we could have named him Willie Mullins, but the way we get the data through our providers, it comes through as WP Mullins. So if you were doing a profile on Willie Mullins, that's what you put in as a trainer name. So in this case, we're using Mick Appleby and we know he's called Michael Appleby in the database. So we've got the system builder now. And then we go to the horse tab because that's where the trainer name entry is. And then we type in um, Michael and If we just run that, we should get his complete career record, which we do. And down at the bottom, we get some qualifiers, engagements, because he's got some runners tomorrow. The thing we first need to do is find out where we want to start when we're looking at a trainer's career. Uh, and in some cases, you want to look at their entire career. But there's generally, with most trainers, there's a, there's, they start off um, very slow and then gradually get better horses. And that's really when you want to profile them from once they've got established not in all cases, someone like Harry Fry, we've just done it from the beginning because he got a lot of horses that he took from, um, that he was already training via being part of the Nichols setup and stuff. Michael Appham is a little bit different. He started off sort of training for somebody else, just a few horses, and uh, it took him a while to get established. And, and eventually, sort of, he really got going. So the way we find that out is if we just initially present by year and see what his breakdown by year is, and we can see that at, right at the beginning, he just had, had any runners. And like I say, I don't even really think that he was sort of training for somebody else, I think. Um, and then it really sort of took off from about 2012 when his strike rate jumps up to what it sort of is now, 11 12%. Um, and that's when he started targeting Suvel horses and um, getting horses out of claimers and things like that. So what we're going to do for this is we're only going to look at from 2012 onwards for this trainer profile. So all we need to do then is go to the date tab and take out all the years before 2012. So we're going to do 2012 onwards. If we run that again, that's all we're left with. And if we now present by breakdown, we can see some baseline figures we've got to work with. What we will do now is we don't want all of these fields when we put it into the Excel file. All we're looking to put in there is runs, wins, strike rate, profit and loss, which is the bet fair profit and loss, expected winners, a the cheese score and the win and place numbers and strike rate. So what you can do in Proform on the system builder tab um, is hide the fields that you don't want. And you just do that by right clicking on any gray heading, don't matter which one, just any of the headings. Click on show fields. And then we can choose the ones we want. We don't want IV. We don't want return. Um, in fact, it'd be easier to do right click, select none, and then select what we do want. So we'll do runners, winners, strike rate, profit lots to bet per SP, expected winners, A, G score. Scroll down a bit. Win and place numbers, win and place strike rate. So we've taken out everything bar in the fields that we want. So what we can do now is fill in, in the Excel sheet, we've got these bottom line summary figures that are a starting point. So all we do now is go back to the software, right click on the header again and do copy to clipboard, back to Excel, and paste them in at that point. 
and we've got some figures in for his baseline figures for Michael Appleby. Now, ignore the colours for now. We're going to come on to that shortly. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to the software. So his baseline figures, uh, he's got about nearly a 13% strike rate from 2,300 run runners, which is pretty good. A profit loss to Betfair SP, but um, <clears throat> that's that's gone down over the years, which we can we can see um, if we present by year. That all of that was in the first year, and people have conned on to him. But there's definitely plenty of angles with Mike Appleby, which you'll see as we go through this. Um, let's just go back to that bottom line summary. We went back to the bottom line then by just clicking back on one of the reports. You can always go back to reports in Proform and uh, just click on the one you want to view. So that's the bottom line summary. So now um, we can run individual presentations. So we could do like um, by age or by um, or sex or country or whatever we wanted to do. Um, or we can do that much quicker by doing this report on all races, courses and horse filters. So, and that just runs for all the presentations automatically and creates many. Lots of you use the software have used this already. So we'll do that right now. We'll just run the bottom line one more time, make sure. Got the quick figures. Yes, we have. And then we'll run all of these through. So this is running all of these presentations um, for the Michael Applebit data from 2012 to now. And it just creates each report, puts them in, gives it a name, um, so you can see which one is each, what the calls, so you can jump around between the reports quite easily then. And it won't take that much longer. Um, if your machine isn't as fast as this, then um, I'm using a pretty powerful i7 processor with 16 gig of RAM, and more specifically, um, a solid state hard drive, which really speeds up profile. So, they're run now. Now we could do the same for a report against all our ratings and rankings, which would um, run another load of reports all by or by all last time out filters, which are the, um, uh, the filters down here. But for now, all we need is the ones we've just done. So if we just go back to the top and do bottom line, then what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the first few in the Excel sheet and fill them in. So we want to fill in race type and by year to start with. So if we go back to the software and uh, down here, we've already got the race type one run. And there it is. So we've got race type. So it's split it out by all weather, chase, hurdle, national flat and turf. Uh, we'll order by strike rate. And you just order the columns by just clicking on them. And you can order them in reverse by just clicking again. And then we'll copy that data to the clipboard again, go back to the Excel sheet, and on the race type, control V to paste them in, get rid of that editing line because we don't need it, and then we've got the race type figures in there. Again, forget the colors because we'll sort them out in a second. So we'll go back to the software and look at uh, by year, which I can't see for looking. Um, there it is. Yeah. And we'll copy them out and go back to the software, testing by year. Uh, now, fills, you said 60, I didn't say 60 gig of RAM, I've got 16 gig of RAM, that's all. So, uh, we've just done year. We'll do month now, so we'll do a breakdown by month. So, back to the software. So, it's already been run for us. So, there's the month one. We'll right click, copy them, go back to Excel. So we'll copy them figures back to the Excel sheet and we've copied day of weekend. We've done the first four uh, and now we're going to sort these colors out. So the way the colors work in the Excel sheets when we've done it for the other trainers is we use the bit. This is the Ari Fry one, by the way. So we do, uh, we use the base uh, strike rates and a and win and play strike rates to decide what the colors are so the l depending on how much lower it is than 25% the more yellow to red the figures will become 
So you can see that's bright red because it's a 0% strike rate. It's not of a big sample size, but just as an example. And then very dark green because it's 45% based on comparing to 25% for every fry. So we do the same for the Michael Appleby sheet. So basically, we highlight the column. In Excel, you can do conditional formatting. And uh, we'll manage the rules that we've got on this one and edit the rules that we've got. And at the moment, it's, uh, it was like the Harry Fry ones were. Now, so what we're going to do, basically what we do is we say um, the, the uh, midpoint color is about the strike rate is on, so 12.94. And then the eye point for green um, is about double that, so which is about 26%. And then apply that rule. And then for the E, we do something similar. So we manage the rules, edit the rule, and um, his A is 1.08. So that's the, that's what the midpoint is. And then the I point is twice that. So 1.2 would be good. And apply the rules. And the win and play strike rates, same thing. Edit the rule. His win and play strike rate is 32.08. So that's his midpoint which gives us about 64 being very high point by the rules. And we can see how this has changed the colors. So all, all the three base ones are the midpoint colors. And then anything that's above becomes more green and anything that's below um, becomes more red. And the same for the AEs. So we can see um, on turf and chase and national flat, his AEs are really strong in comparison to his baseline AEs. Um, and that that's how we get the color code into work. So then when you when you've got all the report done, you can see the color codes and see what stands out fairly easily, what's good and what's bad. And it's um, items you might want to then look at in a bit more detail. So what we'll do now is we'll just continue with the next report. We're not going to go through them all. I'm just going to go through a couple more just so you can see how we build up this Excel sheet. So uh, we'll do the country of breeding next, and that is horse country there. We'll order it by strike rate and copy it to clipboard, drop it in the Excel sheet with the header line, so we we'll get rid of that. And we can see his baseline strike rate was um, 12.91, and for the countries of breeding, um, is USA ones at 19.85. Now that's not not surprising because um, he targets Subal and USA breads go really well at Subal, um, so his strike rate is really high. He's a bit higher on quite a few of them. Then he's, he's got a few lesser ones, but that that's the one that stands out more. Um, so we could actually, if you wanted to start looking using Profile to look a bit more deeper at something in particular that stood out, we could do that, and we'll have a very quick look at how to do that on this USA breeding one. And it's really simple at this stage. We're on the country of breeding report. So we just go to the OS tab and we want to look at just the USA ones. So in the country of breeding, we just deselect all of them. Just choose USA. If we run it again, then all we get is the USA ones. And then we could have a look and break that particular statistic down to, say, present by course. Um, and we could give this little temporary report a name, so we could do it USA bread. I'm, I'm over here, by the way, USA bread by course. And then run that system. And then this gives us all his USA bread horses that he's run at all the various courses. And if we do it by runners, he's at the majority of them at Suville, because that's what he targets with them, specifically by his USA breads. And he's had the most winners there as well. Profit and loss is not massive because they're, they're generally over bet. They're probably um, a better profit and loss back in them early price or best odds guaranteed um, because most of his horses generally move in the market pretty much. Um, you know, he's got a win and play strike rate from them 52 runners of, uh, yeah, of 50%, 26 of them won or placed. And if we uh, want to see them in detail, um, what I did then was just double clicked on Suvo and it shows you all of the runners. Um, over that period of time, so from 2012, and he's had loads of them in 2015. So he's targeting them even more and more, this USA breads. Uh, and he's had plenty that he just keeps running there. A lot of them would be the same horses. So he just keeps running them over and over again. Um, you can get more detail on this breakdown 
uh, by just going to this system builder preferences and adding in any of these extra fields. So if you wanted to see uh, which jockeys rode them, you could have, add the jockey in. And then when you double click, the jockey will then be part of that. And, it, and you can export all this data and do whatever you want with it. So that's how you, we could have broke down the one particular individual stat. What you could also do then is uh, decide you just want to know when he's got USA breads running at Suvel. So if we then just added in the course as well, so we deselect all the courses on the course tab, go down to Suvel, choose Suvel only, run it again. And we're now just looking at USA breads at Suvel. So we could then save this. So we could save this as a system and say, um, it's uh, Michael Colbert, USA Reds, or Southwell even, however you call it. Uh, and we save that system and that'll go in our system list. And then when he has runners at Suvel, uh, they would show on your welcome screen. Um, and that, that's how you can use the research to then save a system and, it, and you get alerts for it. If we go um, back to the reports again, I'm going to show you, we're going to skip down a few now and we'll just go down to um, sires because this one's got like a minimum of 10 runs. So I just want you sh to show you how you can do a filter on that. Um, so if we go to the sire report, which will already be there, we can just scroll back up. Um, it will be up here somewhere. So that was all of the sires. And if we just sort it by runners, we can see that he's had lots of runners for sires where they've only had one or two runs, so there's not much of a sample size. So what we can do is we can use this filter results in the um, system builder to turn the filters on and say we only want to see the results when there was at least 10 runners. We're still on the sire report, so if we just run it again now, we only get the ones that have got at least 10 runners. And then that's what you could copy into that sire report. And you might want to make it so it's more than 10 runners, or you might want to filter it um, by other values where they've had, say, an expected winners of five, so there's a good sample size. And then you're getting down to you know less filters. And then um, it could be that you want to then flag up a sire and save it as an alert system. Or you can copy this data and put it into your trainer profile. Uh, so we'll do that for these copy that to the clipboard, paste that in, and we for this one we did minimum of 10 runs and EX wins of greater than or equal to 5. Um, and you can see it's highlighted all the colour code in the way we've done the formatting. So that's a way you can filter individual reports as well. Um, the next one to show you is um, when, when I've done Edgear stuff before, you can do all Edgear, but uh, there's ways to group them into certain ones. Um, so I'll show you how to do that very briefly. So let's just turn these filters off. It's important to turn them back off because otherwise you'll only be getting um, items filtered with expected runners of five and a um, number of runners of 10 or more. Uh, so if we reset the filters, turn them off. And then if we go to um, the Edgear report that had already been run, which is there, so when you just run by Edgear, you just get all the varying different Edgears that he's ever run them in. Uh, and that's uh, all the various combinations. So, uh, for instance, in a hood, hood first time, hood first time and cheek pieces, hood first time and tongue tie. So if you want to just look for, um, say, first time Edgear and you want to report on that, then what you would do is in the Edgear field, you can, over on the help over here, you can see all the different things you can put in and you can use wildcards. So if you just want to look at any time he's had any type of first time headgear on, you do star one star and then um, run this and you've got anything that's the first time headgear in there. And if we then, instead of presenting by headgear, by bottom line, we can get the bottom line totals for that. So this is the bottom line totals for any first time headgear. And if we copy that, into the clipboard and any headgear first time we had a, f a figure for it paste it just above it because it's going to put headings in Delete the ending headings and we've got any headgear first time now and then we could do the same for no headgear or then for the individual first time headgears 
So that's how you can sort of um, create little grouped reports just using the system builder. So the next one will show you something that's not on the report lists. So when we did this run all reports, uh, one of the things that's not on this run all reports button is the um, first run and second run for new trainer. So we'll have a look at them. So if we go back to the bottom line, so this is the original figures. It's just make up of his figures from um, 2012 onwards. And then we just go to the horse two tab and we do first run for new trainer and run the system. And this is his record with first run for new trainer, which is 2,838 and a 20% strike rate. So quite a lot higher than his um, baseline figures when it's running for him for the first time. So if we copy that to the clipboard, we've got a bit in our report down here, right near the end. For first run for new trainer. You paste that in. So um, first run for new trainer. Uh, so we've pasted them figures in. And we can see that's pr pretty much eye green across the board because he does particularly well with them. If we have a look at second run for new trainer to see how he does second time, we can just go to the OS2 tab and choose second run for new trainer. It automatically unticks first because it can't be first and second run. That's impossible. Run it again and it's not quite as good. So if we copy that, put it into the figures. And there we've got his second run for new trainer which is a bit more like his baseline figures. So he does much better with his first run. So we could then have a look at breaking them down and doing all sorts with them. That's about it. So thank you for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.